Welcome to Talk To Us Live Streaming, where our team of superheroes explore, experiment, enable, and establish the new work order with confidence. I'm Linda Hammond, and this afternoon on Empowerment, I'll be exploring our humanity and how our behaviors lean into our humanity, making it precious, the common thread that builds organizations and nations. And what behaviors and practices we use which detract from our humanity, dividing us and breaking down organizations and nations. A new release on Netflix, The Social Dilemma, got me thinking about our obsession with sorting and labeling, something called old. This then my backstory as to how I got to the message for Empower today. My deconstruction efforts made me realize that labeling is a pattern of behavior which leads to loneliness, results in loss, and is born in language. The origin of labeling was to differentiate one commodity from another with ease and efficiency. But we've become dubious about the content despite the label. How could we not? Even the packaging is identified and categorized, and you see that on most lab labels today. The ease of labeling has led to us having to allocate labels to everything. We even do that to people now. Have you ever heard of Walmart shoppers? The label is there, but we need the ingredients to create the meaning and the context. Okay, so I think you get the idea. I employed a lovely young lady from Uppington. Her first job in the Macropolis of Josie was with Talk To Us as a designer. She arrived at the office and I offered to take her anywhere she wanted to go to introduce her to city life on her first day. The only thing she was interested in was to go to Sandton City to see a kugel. So just out of interest, a kugel is a baked pudding or casserole made from egg, noodles or potatoes. That was not what she had in mind. She was not thinking of that type of kugel. The ingredients that she was looking for were these. So, who here labels out there in the audience? My name is Linda Hammond and I am a compulsive labeler. Ever wondered why we label others? In a lot of instances, it's an unintentional reflex. It's so that we can define friend from foe. But labeling also encourages us to sort, which is often intentional. It makes our life easier, but most of us the reason it does that is most of us snorkel through life. We label and sort, label and sort. There are not many of us who are happy to scuba dive and who have the tenacity or willingness to deep dive and investigate what is so easy to see on the surface. So I'm sure many people think, what is the problem with that? And over the last 20 years, we have sorted ourselves by ideology, race, belief, and many other criteria into factions within communities. We've created factions in the hope of a greater connection, but research shows that loneliness has tracked alongside and increased at the same rate as our sorting, to the extent where Britain has created a post for the Minister of Loneliness. Yes, it's real. Her name is Tracy Crouch. What? Why? The survey showed that one third of Americans over the age of 45 are lonely. Loneliness is a growing health epidemic leading to hypertension, heart disease and dementia. It is considered worse than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Our labeling and sorting habits, which are born out of a human necessity to belong, has had the opposite effect. We work with, our kids go to school with, we go to church with people who think just like us. And we make every effort to avoid people who don't think like us. All the sorting and labeling doesn't necessarily result in authentic connection or connection at all. More like we just hate the same people. A term framed as common enemy intimacy. I don't really know you. And I don't want to get to know you, but it's great that you dislike those people too, so then you can join my circle. My belief is that we as humans are hardwired to connect and take care of each other. Not just those who we have labeled and approved, but everyone. 
We're not wired to function alongside each other with no connection. But our labeling and sorting has led to us forgetting how to connect with others. We've sorted ourselves into bunkers and built walls around ourselves and what's in our bunker behind our wall is the same stuff. Walls might keep things in, but they also stop new things from coming in. And they keep other things out. They also stop new ideas from coming in. We've forgotten how to, or that we need to connect with each other. And on the rare occasion when we do, we experience collective joy. Who can remember the World Cup Rugby? We celebrated with people that at any other time we probably would never have got tired of slapping. The loss of this connection and ability to have collective joy results in entropy. You see this so often in business. We don't have the inspiration or energy to tackle the big stuff. So we spend our time and energy on the unintentional reflex of labeling and sorting. We've lost our ability and will to connect and experience collective joy. Humanity is stuck. How did we get there? Where did this all start? It starts with our primary way of communication, language. If someone speaks a different language to us, the connection is broken. In this country, it's a challenge because we have so many languages. When we do speak the same language, we have a choice. Do we use it as a weapon or as an olive branch? It starts at the micro level with you and me and our family our friends, our school, our work, and the language we use and the words we use. If you're a leader in a business, I'm sure you'll recognize all of these practices in your business. The labeling, the sorting, the loneliness and lack of purpose and loss of energy and innovation. This is especially prevalent at the moment because of the massive changes taking place in most organizations undergoing digitization which is just about every single one of them. There's a cohort of people that may not be digitally savvy in your organization. They're commonly referred to as the missing middle. These are the people who have not grown up with technology. They're not yet digital citizens. They remain on the fringes. They don't often understand the value of data and digitization. They can't understand dashboards, but they do understand your business and have a wealth of experience and exposure in your industry. How do we bring them in to the fold and include them and make them part of the business? A big challenge for business today is to digitize the human element. Because if you don't, your digitization strategy, whatever that may be, will fail. And a challenge we face daily is what is the return on investment of change management interventions? It's always calculated in financial terms and financial terms only. It is seldom that we look at what might happen if our people don't buy into and adopt our new way of thinking. We need to change our measurement methods to include the cost of lack of human adoption and change the multiple elements within the human behavior that will buy us the return on innovation investment. All of these are really heavily reliant on having a great communication landscape and leaders who can articulate the organization's purpose with confidence and conviction, using narrative theory and understanding the relevance and power of neuroplasticity. My closing thoughts today are as follows. This principles apply. This, these, this principle applies. If you want to look like this, then you need to do this and not run out of energy along the way. So you can't delegate or abdicate this change. It's yours to make and it's you who needs to do it. How do you go about doing it? Well, the first thing I think is to stop labeling and sorting. So when that reflex kicks in, kick it out. This is the biggest challenge. Get out your scuba diving gear and stop snorkeling. Dive down, check it out, engage with what you think is just a stone maybe it's a fish, acknowledge your prejudices, break down the walls around you and your family and your com communities, let new people and thoughts in, combat loneliness, find places and things to do where you have opportunities to connect with people you usually wouldn't connect with, grounded in a common purpose, 
Don't lose what you've got to what you've lost. So change your language. That's also important. Watch it, change it. If you found this useful, please hit like, subscribe and follow. And more importantly, talk to us. You can complete our contact form on our website. Thank you for watching and your time and good afternoon.